millions of you have watched our videos. In fact, we now have over 170 million views on our channel, which is just mind-blowing. So thank you, honestly. Thank you for sticking around for so, so many years. So I'm very pleased to announce that starting today, you can also read our videos on our own website, zenofta.com slash reviews. Yes, if you're on the go and you just cannot be bothered to plug in your headphones and, you know, watch the actual videos, or your internet connection simply doesn't allow it, or you just want to sit back and chill by reading articles, well, that's all possible now. Again, just go to zoneofthe.com slash reviews and you can find all of our recent reviews there. You can even leave comments directly on the articles and interact with us. Uh, you can even watch the full video directly from there, uh, as well as even like the article, share with your friends, and also sign up for email updates. Uh, so that you get, you know, updated when a new article gets posted. Apple has just unveiled the new iPhone 11s this week, and we got three of them. The iPhone 11, which is the successor to the iPhone XR, the iPhone 11 Pro, which is the successor to the iPhone XS, and then the iPhone 11 Pro Max, really bad name, which is the successor to the iPhone XS Max. So let's see how the iPhone 11 Pro Max compares to Samsung's own flagship, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and see which one is actually worth getting. This video is split into seven different sections, design, display, uh, camera, performance, special features, battery, and price. So yeah, get us next ready and here's everything you need to know. Okay, so before starting this video, I just want to propose a challenge to you guys. Can we hit 50,000 followers on Instagram by the end of the month? Can we do that? We're currently at, I believe, 41k? So if we can hit 50k by the end of September, we're gonna give away a pair of AirPods 2 or even AirPods 3. And if we hit by whatever miracle 100k, we're gonna give away something even more special, something from the Apple event um, that was announced at the Apple event. So yeah, let's see if we can do it. Just go to instagram.com slash zone of tech, give a follow, and I don't know, have a look at some awesome content that we post there. And yeah, I'll be back at the end of the month and you know, in a few minutes, seconds. Okay, so starting off with the design, these two phones are very, very different. The Note 10 Plus is noticeably taller and also wider than the iPhone 11 Pro Max is. And while they're both pretty much impossible to use in one hand, just because of how massive they are, the Note 10 is actually even more difficult to handle and use uh, than the iPhone 11 Pro Max is. However, the Note 10 Plus is quite a bit thinner than the iPhone is, measuring in at 7.9mm thin versus 8.1mm, and this is actually more noticeable than you think, because uh, the Note 10 actually has curved edges, so the front and the back glass is actually curved, and because of that, the Note 10 actually feels even thinner than it actually is. So, yeah, pretty big difference in terms of how they feel in the hand, and yeah, the Note 10 feels, feels better. And, thinner at least. However, the iPhone 11 Pro does have some more premium material, so to say, uh, with a full stainless steel frame as opposed to polished aluminum, and then we also get what Apple's calling the world's most durable glass in a smartphone, front and back. Uh, and we also get a matte glass back rather than the glossy one that we have on the Note. However, just looking at the design alone, the Note 10 Plus just looks so, so much better. Not only does it have thinner bezels uh, than the iPhone does, but it also has a very, very tiny camera module cutout in the middle of the display, and that's, that's basically it. There's no massive notch taking up almost the entirety of the top portion of the display, like on the iPhone. So this is actually the third generation of iPhones with the exact same design. Uh, Samsung, however, updates their design every single year, reason why the iPhone is starting to look old and outdated, since, well, it looks the same as in 2018 and even 2017. And then if we take a look on the back, Samsung opted for a uniform alignment of the camera modules. So we have three modules on both, but Samsung's modules are vertically aligned, while on the iPhone we have this nest of modules, this beehive. <laughs> yeah, it honestly looks like a kitchen hob, so yeah, not the best, not the best design. And yes, I know, some of you might actually prefer the design of the iPhone but there's no denying that the Note has a much more modern design and definitely takes this one. Moving on to the display, Apple has now updated display on the iPhone 11 Pros, uh, and they're calling these the Super Retina XDR displays. Essentially, we now get a higher brightness of 1200 nits versus 1000 nits like we had before in HDR content, and then 800 nits versus 625 uh, like we had on the iPhone XS Max when viewing it outdoors. We also get double the contrast to 2 million to 1 from 1 million to 1. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, that's really impressive, but fun fact, this is actually the exact same display technology that Samsung already uses in the Note 10 Plus. Same exact panel, the only differences are the resolution and the size. So resolution-wise, the Note 10 Plus features a 3040 by 1440 resolution panel at 498 ppi. 
The iPhone 11 Pro Max, however, features a 2688 by 1242 resolution panel at 458 ppi. So yeah, the iPhone has a slightly lower resolution display here. However, that's not really something that you'll be able to tell between the two easily. But something that you'll definitely be able to tell right away is the display size. So we have a 6.5 inch panel on the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus a 6.8 inch panel on the Note 10 Plus. And added to the fact that we also have an almost invisible camera cutout, and the Note 10 Plus's display is just so, so much better. You get to see more content with less obstructions. So yeah, the Note 10 Plus is just the best smartphone right now for viewing content. The display on this is just incredible. And then also, if you care about HDR content, both support HDR. Uh, however, the Note 10 Plus also supports HDR 10 Plus, which the iPhone does not, but the iPhone does support Dolby Vision. So yeah, display-wise, the Note 10 Plus takes this one as well. Now, moving on to the camera, both phones now feature a triple lens camera module on the back. So this means that you have your regular lens, you have a telephoto lens or a zoom lens, and then you also have a third brand new wide angle lens, which lets you capture so, so much more in the shot. Wide angle is something that we didn't have on iPhones before, so the iPhone 11 Pro is the first iPhone to feature one, uh, but this is something that we've had on other Android smartphones for years now, like the LG G6 for example, that was the first one I believe, and that one came out in uh, 2016, three years ago. However, what Apple does really really well here is that unlike the Note, which uses three different sensors for those three cameras, Apple actually tried to mesh them up as close as possible. And in fact, they even calibrated the cameras in factory before release. So this is quite awesome. They wanted to get them as close as possible in terms of the color reproduction and the exposure. And yeah, this is also done automatically when you take a photo in the background. Actually, before you take a shot, uh, all the lenses are actually calibrated between them. What this means is that you can smoothly transition between the three lenses and it will actually feel as if you're only using one lens, just you know, one that has a ton of zoom capabilities. And all the shots would be identical between the three cameras in terms of color and exposure. Unlike the Note 10, for example, and all the other smartphones that have three camera modules, which produce very, very different results uh, based on the lens that you use. And this is just incredible, like no other smartphone manufacturer has done this in the past. So yeah, this is indeed a key selling feature of this new iPhone. Also, all three modules support 4K60 video recording, unlike the Note 10 Pluses, on which just the main lens supports 4K60 for whatever reason. And you can also preview and I believe even record with all the camera modules on the iPhone at the same time. Uh, not with a first party camera app, but with a third party one called Filmic Pro, which is honestly an amazing app. I've been using that for a few years now. Uh, it's insanely good. Not sponsored, but it's really, really good. So yeah, you can probably tell that the camera is actually the main selling feature of this new iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. Apple is using that insanely powerful A13 processor, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, to process every single frame of a 4K60 video in real time. And it does noise reduction, exposure compensation, color correction, and more. Everything in real time, that's insane. And because of this, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has the best video recording capabilities of any smartphone on the market right now. Even the front-facing camera can now record in up to 4K 60 frames per second as well, as opposed to 4K 30 on the Note 10 Plus. Then the flash is also brighter on the iPhone, and we also have a quad LED flash versus a single flash like on the Note. Then the telephoto lens is also better on the iPhone, since uh, it is not only a larger sensor than on the Note, but also an f2.0 aperture versus the f2.1 on the Note, so it can let slightly more light into the sensor. The Note does have an f1.5 aperture uh, on the main lens, which activates in low light only, otherwise we have an f2.4, so that's a switchable aperture, that's pretty cool, uh, and that lets more light into the sensor than the f1.8 aperture that we have on the main camera of the iPhone. And they both feature a night mode now, so yeah, low light photography is pretty good on both now. Um, definitely stay tuned for the full in-depth zone of the camera comparisons between the two, uh, yeah, subscribe notifications to get notified when that video goes live. So that should be in the first week after the iPhone iPhone has been officially released. So after the 20th of September, uh, that's when you'll be able to see, you know, for yourself, which one actually has a better camera. But from the looks of it, it seems like the iPhone should be the winner here. Moving on to the performance, this is the second area in which the iPhone wins. You see, even the Apple A12 processor from the iPhone XS that was released uh, a year ago is still more powerful than the Snapdragon 855 and even the brand new Exynos 9825 that Samsung has just added to their Galaxy Note 10 Plus like a month ago. And yes, the iPhone 11 Pro Max now comes with the Apple A13 processor, which is even more powerful than the A12 was last year. 
Um, so yeah, the Pro Max is now about two years ahead of the Note 10 Plus in terms of raw performance. Over the Note 10 Plus now comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM versus four gigabytes on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, there were a few reports that the Pro Max actually has six gigabytes of RAM, but that's not confirmed as of yet. So stay tuned for some more updates on that. Um, however, my Note 10 Plus, like I said, comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM and I can easily keep a ton of apps open in the background. Like even apps that I opened three days ago, that's insane. My iPhone XS Max, which had four gigabytes of RAM, struggled to keep open, uh, to keep a few apps open that I just had opened a few hours ago in the background. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty certain that this issue will still persist to a lesser extent, of course, even with six gigabytes of RAM. So yes, raw performance is much better on the iPhone, but RAM management is better on the Note 10 Plus. But I mean, here's the thing, guys. You can have a quantum processor in your smartphone, but it won't matter at all if it's not being used to its full potential. And on the iPhone, yes, you do have some amazing camera features and a lot of high-end games that actually do take advantage of that extremely powerful processor. However, I use my phone for either social media or productivity when I'm on the go. And the iPhone 11 Pro Max still does not have any split screen support, which for me at least is a huge deal breaker. Like for example, I went to IFA last week on a plane um, and I, I was trying to, I had some, some calendar events on a PDF and I was trying to put those into you know, my actual calendar. And on the note, this was extremely easy to do because I just opened up the calendar app and the PDF side by side and I just created the events. On the iPhone, this would have been such a pain to do because I had to constantly, uh, I would have had to constantly switch between apps back and forward and remember what I had in the previous one because there's no actual split screen support. You have to use one app at the same time. Um, on the Note, you can actually have three apps open at the same time. Uh, so two apps and then the uh, S Notes and you can even have a video picture in picture. So you can actually have up to four apps open at the same time on the Note versus one app, single app, on the iPhone. So as a business user, this is not a pro device for me in any way. Speaking of a pro device, you can actually connect your notes to an external display via USB-C, which this one does not have, uh, and boot into something called DeX. So DeX actually turns uh, your UI that you see on the monitor into something that looks very similar to Windows 10. So you get a full desktop experience with full desktop apps such as Chrome, Microsoft Office, and then you just attach a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse, and then, you know, there you go. You have now turned your smartphone into something similar to a full desktop PC experience. And again, this is something that you just just cannot do with the iPhone. So even though the iPhone is more powerful than the Note is, you can do more things with the Note. And that for me is what matters the most. Okay, so what about special features now? Um, do these phones have any unique key selling points that the other one does not? And yes, they, uh, they both do. So let's start off with the Note 10 Plus. We have microSD card support, which lets you expand the storage even more to up to 512 gigabytes of extra storage fairly inexpensively. And then speaking of storage, you also get 256 gigabytes of storage on the baseline model versus 64 gigabytes on the iPhone. And then we also get, you know, the famous S Pen, the built-in stylus that sits inside your phone and you can obviously take it out whenever you want. And you can use this for drawing, sketching, signing documents, or my favorite, photo editing in Lightroom. It's, you know, amazing to have such a precise tool for you to use in Lightroom and, you know, photo editing on the go. This is just amazing. And then we also have a time of flight or TOF sensor on the back of the Note 10 Plus, which is basically what Apple uses on the front. So this is a 3D sensing system or camera, and Apple uses this for face ID and unlocking the phone, while Samsung uses this on the back for improving the portrait mode and also for scanning 3D objects, which doesn't really work that well, but hey, you know, it's, it's here. We then get an in-display fingerprint reader on the Note, and probably one of my favorite features is reverse wireless charging. So this is really cool. This means that you can place other wireless charging accessories or devices like the AirPods 2, for example, or even an iPhone on the back of the Note 10, and it will actually charge just like that, just like, you know, magic. This was actually supposed to be coming to the iPhone 11, but it got removed in the end, hashtag sad face, and we don't know exactly why. Um, and we also get one of my favorite features on the Note, which is an always on display. Apple still doesn't have this on the iPhones, they've just added it to the Apple Watch Series 5, so maybe next year it will be coming to the iPhones. Uh, but essentially what this does is that it shows you the time and your notifications on the display all the time, without you having to do anything, you know, tap the display or lift the phone or anything like that. And I absolutely love this. It's pretty much like having a desk clock, a smart desk clock. Love it. Also, the Note 10 does have a USB Type-C port versus still Lightning on the iPhone. Now, in terms of all the other special features that the iPhone has, um, aside from Face ID, we do have a 120 Hz refresh rate 
input panel for the touchscreen. So this is not a 120 hertz refresh rate display, but basically your finger gestures, your taps are registered much faster and more accurately than on the notes. And then water resistance is also better on the iPhone, up to 4 meters for 30 minutes versus just 1.5 meters 30 minutes on the Note 10. Then Apple also removed 3D Touch and they added an improved haptic engine. So they already had the best haptic engine on the smartphone, uh, the Note 10 one was extremely extremely close to the iPhones, uh, but now the iPhone 11 Pro Maxes should be even better. Here's something pretty cool, so the iPhone has this brand new U1 chip, uh, which will allow you to very precisely locate other devices that also have the U1 chip, uh, with a margin of error of just 5 centimeters. This will be especially useful when Apple releases uh, the tile-like trackers that we've seen leaked. Uh, these are coming apparently by the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of special features that the iPhone has. So yeah, really the biggest advantage of having an iPhone and also this advantage uh, is the Apple ecosystem. You do get locked into it very quickly, uh, but it is, it is indeed the best ecosystem that there is. Especially if you buy an Apple Watch, a Mac, AirPods, it's just amazing how fast and smooth they all communicate rather than all of these being completely separate devices. Okay, so what about the battery life now? Well, on paper, the Note 10 Plus has a larger battery, a 4300 mAh battery versus the 3500 mAh battery that we have on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. But you see, the Note 10 Plus also has a larger display, which does require more power, and not even to mention the S Pen that's always in your phone and always, always charging. Speaking of charging, they both support fast charging up to about 50% in 30 minutes, which is good. Uh, and we finally have a fast charger bundled inside the box of the iPhone, which we didn't have before. This is the first time. Um, yeah, we finally have it. However, the Note 10 Plus can also be charged to full in just over an hour. And if you buy an even more powerful 45 watt charger from Samsung, it can be fully charged in 40 minutes, which is nuts. This is this phone has the fastest charging of any phone on the market, but you need to buy that separate, even more powerful charger in order to get that 40 minute charge, um, full charge on this phone. Now, Apple does claim that its new iPhone Pro 11 Pro Max, I need to get used to that name, uh, lasts five hours or more than the iPhone XS Max did. So I'm quite curious to testing that out. Definitely stay tuned for the full in-depth review in a few weeks and I'll be covering my experience with the battery life in detail. Okay, so, so far the iPhone won the performance test uh, and the camera sections, camera at least on paper, while the Note has won in terms of the design, the display, the special features, and you know, the battery life was pretty much a tie for now. So having said all of this, how much is each of these phones? Well, the Note 10 Plus costs $1,100 in the US or £1,000 in the UK for the baseline 256 gigabyte option. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, on the other hand, costs $1,100 in the US, so the same price as the Note, uh, but £1,150 in the UK, so £150 more for the iPhone in the UK. However, this is only for the baseline 64 gigabytes of storage model and not the 256 variant. Okay, so having said all of this, there's no denying that the Note 10 Plus is the better phone. It not only offers you more features and higher end components, but it also does that at a lower price. But you know, iOS is still more polished than Android is with better app support and more quality apps in general. So if you're into the Apple ecosystem already, uh, the iPhone is the better option for you to get. Obviously, I'm just saying this because of, you know, the lot of dislikes that I'm going to get because I I said that this is better because it is better. That's the thing. The Note 10 Plus is better. But yeah, I'm really curious to testing out the camera. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for more videos on the iPhone 11 Pro once it officially releases on September the 20th. And, you know, I, I, I can fully test out the camera and everything that this phone has to offer. But yeah, until then, uh, definitely subscribe and notifications if you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one hopefully was. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know. And let me know in the comments. Which one would you guys pick and why? Note 10 Plus or iPhone 11 Pro Max? You've really got to get used to that name. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.